Greetings everyone. Once again, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Advocate William Matzelo. The purpose of this YouTube channel is to teach the word, to preach the word, and even to teach South African law. Now today I will be teaching one of the many aspects of South African law. And now my focus will be on co-parenting. Specifically, we'll look at the parenting plan and um, check what the law in South Africa says about that issue. You know, in most instances, or let me not, let me say the key principle when we deal with children, and let me mention that children is anybody under the age of 18. 18 years below, 18 years and below. So that's how South African constitution defines a child. And the same South African constitution says in section 28, subsection two, that every time when we deal with issues regarding children of paramount interest, of paramount importance, rather, is the best interest of the child. That is why, as parents, when you have um, another parent has the custody of the child, another one has only visitation rights, but there's a shared contact. There must be a way in which we deal with the situation that will result in everything being done in the best interest of the child. And the question is, who is a parent here? A parent can be adoptive parent, can be both biological parents, but obviously is the mother and the father of the child. And sometimes the situation that I've just outlined of them having, both having shared contact but they are not living together. It may be because they are divorced, they are going through divorce, they are separated, they are no longer living together, or they actually never married, but they have a child together. So there are some things that people can implement in that kind of a setup. For example, there must be mutual respect. But unfortunately, in those instances, there can be so much fights going on in such a way that people forget that we have to prioritize the child. And in order to prioritize the child, let there be mutual respect, let there be communication, let's put our feelings aside. Forget about your hurt. You know, I was watching one television program where this celebrity said, I decided when I divorced that I am going to not hate this person that my children so much love. So you need to remember that for the children, this is their father and they love him. And for the mother, for the father, he must remember that this is the mother and they love him. So we have to find a way of dealing with the situation without affecting children. Because this may have negative psychological effects on the lives of the children. At the end of the day, the children need to see their, their parents, both their parents. So that is why it's important that we prioritize them. It's important that when we deal with the situation, there is mutual respect. It's important that we put our feelings aside. That is why it is important that as regards children, there must be teamwork. As regards children, there must be teamwork. But unfortunately, it doesn't always happen like that. And that is why now, Section 33 of the Children's Act, number 38 of 2005, come into effect. Because this is a section that deals with 
a co-parenting plan whereby as parents to this child or to these children you have to approach people who are now expert in the field before you even go to the court because this parenting plan in terms of this section ultimately will be made an order of court so you have to approach people who are experts in the field who can assist you in the drafting of this parental plan because this parental plan must be reduced in writing the people that you can consult when you're drafting this parental plan that is going to guide the process of how you are going to co-parent you can consult a social worker you can consult with a psychologist you can consult with a family advocate you can consult with a family law lawyer to help you to mediate the process of drafting this parenting plan they are experts in the field because you during that time you may you may be emotional and you may not even be able to anticipate what will happen in the future you may just be looking at the now but as people who have dealt with these issues before who are trained they'll be able to assist you to mediate the process of drafting a parental plan and this issue of parental plan does not necessarily involve third parties however there will be exception like for example one of the things that you have to consider is the child contact with any other person it's one of the things that you will consider but in the main it will be about you as parents and how you are going to share this contact because the other parent is staying with the child or with the children the other person is just having visitation rights one of the issues that will be addressed amongst others in that parenting plan is where and with whom the child would live the parenting plan will stipulate that in most instances not all there are exceptions but in most instances minor children would preferably live with the mother and the father will have visitation rights if that setup is to the best interest of the child there are instances where the best interest of the child would be if the child lives with the father so during that mediation process while drafting this plan the specialists will assist the second issue is the issue of maintenance say this is a issue of divorce who will maintain the child how much will the child be be maintained it's one of the issues that will be stipulated in this plan one of the issues that will be addressed in the parental plan as i mentioned earlier is contact between the child and any other person you must remember that maybe this is a situation where the other parent is married already any other person may include somebody like a step parent if it's an adopted child it may talk to maybe their biological parents and so on and so forth one of the issues that will be addressed to be schooling where will the child go to school which school is it going to be a private school is it going to be a government school is it going to be affordable is it going to be a boarding the religious of uh, uh, activity which religion would a child follow is it going to be the mothers or the fathers if the parents have different religions and obviously this talk to the religious upbringing of the child and any other aspect 
that will be relevant in the upbringing of a child. Where will the child spend holidays? Maybe will the, the, the weekend of Father's Day, the child will go and will be with the father. They can decide during school holidays if it's a, a one month, five, two weeks, the child will be with the father, two weeks, the, the child will. So all other relevant aspects will be addressed during the drafting of this parental plan because it must be in writing. Everything must be reduced in writing. And then after that, it is reduced in writing. It may be registered with a family advocate. May. It's not a must because the, the act says may. But in drafting it, as I've emphasized and I want to repeat, the best interest of the child must be considered and it is done before you go to court. By the time you go to court, you just finish it to the court and request the court to make it a court order. And at that time, obviously, the judge will ensure that it was drafted with the assistance of specialists or of, of experts in this field. As I've said, social worker, psychologist, family advocate, family law lawyer. So now, the issue of maintenance, as I said, is one of the issues that will also be addressed. But in our next video, I will explain what happens with maintenance in instances where you are still going through a divorce, the divorce is not yet finalized, what will happen? Because this is one of the issues that must be addressed by the court and made a court order. But for now, it's just about this parental plan to know that, you know what, people when they go through divorce, even if they don't, they're not going through divorce, when they have children and there is animosity between them, the other one pulled this way, the other one pulled this way. There are instances where, in certain instances where um, the mother can even use the children or refuse with the children because the father is not paying maintenance. Or the father can say, I will not pay maintenance because she's refusing with the children, vice versa. Now, for me, this is the best solution to deal with that situation. Because at the end of the day, this parental plan will be reduced in writing, as I said, will be presented to the court. It will be now be a court order. And once it's a court order, if the other party does not comply with what the parental plan says, it means that you are in contempt of court. And you know that contempt of court is an offense. And ultimately, you know what will happen to you? if you defy the court. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was very helpful because I know of many instances where children are being used as a tug of war. The other parent is pulling this way, the other one is pulling this way. Please know that you can go through this route of drafting a, a, a parental plan which will later be endorsed by the court and which will now be a court order. Thank you very much. I will see you in our next video. Please like, please comment, and please subscribe and even share. As I said last time, subscribing is for free. You just press the word subscribe. It changes the color. That way you know you have subscribed. Thank you very much.